Hello and welcome back to some more Bitburners. So it's been a week since I've actually played the game and I'm still at this uh, Bitnode selection stream. Um, there's definitely quite a lot of options out there as you saw from the previous video where we went, went through every single Bitnode. Um, so I, I sort of just had to analyze everything and see uh, I guess what's the, what's the best order to actually complete these Bitnodes. And um, this is probably a debatable topic because everyone has different opinions on which uh, bitnode to complete. Um, most people will either, you know, just go for the next one. So for after bitnode one, it makes sense to go to bitnode two. Uh, but for me, my approach is to um, analyze every single rewards, every single income generation methods, and then from those two, um, I then extracted the dependencies between them. Uh, so that it's not too much of a pain on my side to actually do those bit nodes when we get there. Um, and then after creating this big table, um, I then created this uh, simplified graph to illustrate um, where I'm gonna go um, with uh, with this, uh, I guess you know the the progression of this game. Uh, so from bit node one, we can in theory go to bit node three, bit node four, and bit node eight. Um, so the reason why we can go to bitnode 3 is because uh, the income generation methods is mostly the same. Uh, the only difference is that we get a new thing called corporations. And I don't really know what this does, but I'm pretty sure that this is a, an API by itself um, that we can fully automate uh, using our scripts. So that's why from bitnode 1 we can go straight to bitnode 3 because that one doesn't really rely on any other uh, features or capabilities that would make our lives easier to do. So for bitnode 2, I would have gone with bitnode 2 but the, the downside here is that this bitnode is very focused on gangs, crimes and also infiltration. And if you've never done them, they're basically just manual cl clicking um, to actually do them. And as much as possible, I don't want to um, do all of those manually. So um, to automate that, we have to access the Singularity API, which can be unlocked in BitNode 4. And BitNode 4 doesn't really have any dependencies anywhere. So that's why we can go straight to BitNode 4 to be able to unlock Singularity and then go to BitNode 2 right afterwards to automate most of the income generation methods there um, and also unlock the gangs. And then bitnode 8, we can go straight to bitnode 8 because um, the only way you can make money in this bitnode, according to the uh, description, is by uh, trading stocks. And as far as I know, trading stocks, it doesn't really rely on anything. Um, it, it, yeah, it requires some modification on our scripts, but it doesn't rely on other bitnodes or the, uh, I guess, rewards from other bitnodes. So we can go straight to this. And by the end of this, um, I'm assuming that we'd have, uh, I guess, a um, like a highly optimized trading script uh, that we can use for BitNode 10. And the reason for this is because BitNode 10, the income generation method that stayed the same is uh, trading via the stock market. Um, so if we have a highly optimized uh, stock trading script, then we can go to BitNode 10 so that we have a consistent income and from bitnode 10 we can um you know use the sleeves and yeah remember the, this this diagram here it, it isn't prescriptive everyone can do whatever they want um th this is just me trying to logically think through the i guess you know the ordering at which i do my bitnodes um so after completing all of those uh, top level ones we're gonna have different income options to uh different options to produce our income and then any bit nodes down here has a very high um i guess you know reduction on the multipliers that we have on our money um so if we have more uh, i guess options to generate income it means that we have more scripts to run to actually produce us money and producing money is what progresses us through the game because that's what's needed to buy augments and basically everything just so that we can access the the uh, world daemon to destroy the bitnode um so as soon as we go to bitnode 5 so bitnode 5 is the one where you know we unlock the formulas.exe when we uh finish it 
Um, this one also has some decrease in uh, money multipliers. So if we have multiple options, then we can sort of counteract that decrease by just having more revenue streams. Um, and then the reason why I want to complete Bitnode 5 before any of this is because by the end of this, I'm going to get formulas.exe, which all our scripts will rely on because that, that's the thing that allows us to uh, effectively coordinate everything. Um, and then from Bitnode 5, I can go into any of this. Um, and the reason why I have to complete 6 before 7 is because they're the Blade Burner API. I still don't know what Blade Burner is. Um, and then, um, and then down here, the 12 one is, uh, I want it to be the end game because this one's the infinite one. Um, so if I, if I complete everything else, I can just keep replaying this bit node, um, over and over again. And then it gets harder and harder as I progress through. If you could see here, um, there's, uh, some nodes that are colored green and the ones colored green, uh, covers some of the unknowns that I don't know. I don't know what sleeves are. Uh, I don't know how gangs work. Um, there's quite a lot of unknowns in uh, in this game that I still have to explore. But as we progress through uh, all this, these bit nodes, um, we can s sort of just tick them off and take them away. Um, so yeah, so that's that's a progress. That's a high level plan. Um, and with that said, I'm actually interested in going to number three, um, bit node number three, so that we can unlock corporations. Um, and the reason for this is because I want to see what um, what it's like to change to another bit node, um, and it's also a lot easier. So I don't know what, how this difficulty is, um, uh, I guess, assigned. So I, I thought I might as well go for the easy one first before we go for the harder stuff. Um, so yeah, with, without further ado, let's uh, let's join corporatocracy. All right, so um, looks like here we are. Um, it's kind of anticlimactic. I thought there was gonna be some really big grand thing where we enter um, a new bit node, but it looks like we just restart the the game as if we're just replaying it from, from nothing. Um, it looks like we have this bit flume. I don't know what this is, but I'll, I'll research this um, in while I, I explain things and go through the I guess some of the YouTube comments um, I'm also gonna set up the uh, the hacknet nodes to see if um, that's still generating us income uh, just so that I can gain some passive income while um, you know while, while going through all the comments so uh, let's run the comments here all right, so it looks like there's quite a lot of new comments here. So, um, but it makes sense because I've been away for an entire week. Um, just to avoid bloating up the video way too much, uh, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna review the comments for five minutes, uh, as much comments as I can, um, and then uh, I'll be reviewing the next set of next set of comments um, in the next videos. Um, so, without further ado, let's uh, get into it. First one is by Crypto Beard, and he says the funny thing is that in the real world, people wouldn't store their money on servers. That is a big no-no. But I love the game, by the way. Super fun. Uh, yes, that's really good. Um, I love how you love the game uh, and enjoying it. Um, and also, yes, I definitely agree. That's the only real unrealistic thing about this game. Uh, next one is by Sotalis, and he's asking, uh, I'm wondering what you run on home server since it isn't included in the fleets like other servers. I have a lot of memory that isn't being utilized. For me, I like to keep the home server as clear as possible, mainly because I like to ex experiment with scripts and um, I want to, I guess, have that ease of mind that, you know, no matter how ridiculously big my scripts are, my home server will always have that power to run it. Uh, but in theory, you can modify the fleet script to allocate a percentage of the home server's memory. Um, I might do that in future videos, but for now, I don't really see uh, the purpose for it. Uh, next one is from Sage PTR, and he says the red pill connects World Daemon to the uh, to the cave. Uh, without this augmentation, World Daemon doesn't appear in the topology and cannot be backdoored. Um, yes, thank you for that uh, clarification. Um, it, th this is definitely a, a important information for anyone else who is new to the game. 
um next one is again from solace and he says um uh, love the little animation you did to explain the situation uh thank you for that uh, this was from bitburner number five um uh, i don't really do animations i just move uh emojis around in miro and then uh hopefully <laughs> hope that explained things uh but yeah thank you uh next one is from silent one and he says, hey, casually, have you tried using VS Code as an external editor? I've got it mostly working with the official VS Code template so that it's connected to the game. And it compiles my TypeScript into JavaScript and auto uploads it into the game. That's pretty cool. Uh, but I can't get the debugging to work. Very few tutorials and the info in the readme is quite limited. Hoping you can shed some light into this. Uh, thanks for the rest. Your videos have been great from the start. Um, uh, within a couple of days, I've already automated everything I could, and you definitely got the bow on girl me. Thanks. Uh, no problem, Silent. Um, and it's really good that um, you're uh, progressing through the game quite well. Um, I remember having this conversation with you, and um, I remember you already got the debugging to work from assistance uh, from the Discord community, so that's, that's very good. And if there's very few tutorials, then it means that there is a market gap for, uh, I guess, this type of information. So maybe you can record video to um, shed some light or share the information to the world on how to do this. Um, if not, I could um, spend some time uh, in future videos trying to explore this VS Code. But for me, I personally don't need it yet. Um, so I'm going to do that when, when I do need that debugging feature. Um, most of the time, I just do everything by eye. So static analysis um, and then try to analyze what um, my code is doing. Uh, by through experimentation and then if I do get stuck then I do print statements everywhere and comment stuff out um, But yeah, maybe in the future video I might cover how to set up the VS Code extension um, And then last one is from Ricky Jacks Jackson and he says when running launch fleets I get a lot of runtime errors saying I don't have root access It seems to be when the server is being targeted has zero RAM is there a fix for this? Alright, so I noticed that a lot of people have been having the same issue as you, Ricky. So I did some investigation to try to understand what the problem was. Um, and I think I found out what the root cause is. Um, so here we are connected to the fantasy server. If we analyze this, we could see that uh, we don't really have root access to this server. And um, the reason why this is a problem is because if you don't have root access to a server, it means you can't run the hack, weaken, and grow commands. So let's, if we try to run hack, uh, you can see that it throws an error here because we don't have root access. We can't really penetrate them because we don't have the required uh, hacking scripts or cracking scripts to um, you know, meet this required number of ports. So we cannot penetrate this. So to fix this, um, uh, let's open up the uh, find target script. What we want to do is we want to import two functions. So can penetrate and can hack from the utilities file. And if we scroll down to the bottom where we could see get, uh, get potential targets, we first have to declare our hacking or cracking scripts. Um, and then for every hackable node, um, then we try to gain root access to them. Um, and then the condition for hackable node has changed from just can hack and um, not including the purchase server to um, nodes that we can actually penetrate. And the reason for this is because uh, when we suggest targets, we want to make sure that the targets we do suggest uh, can run the hack, weaken, and grow commands. Um, and then this should have fixed the issue. Um, so you probably have to test this, but in theory it should. And I changed both the find targets and the strategist uh, script to have this uh, the support here. So if we scroll down strategist, get poten potential targets, and then it has the same changes. Um, so I push this into the, the GitHub, and hopefully that should address uh, all the issues that you guys are having. Um, and yeah. Um, so in future videos, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be going over this um, corporation handbook to see how what we need to do to progress through this bit node. Um, and then hopefully we could figure out what um, sort of stuff we need to automate this entire uh, corporation system. So I guess I'll see you guys in the next one.